Two Broke Rednecks present... Sid Davis, establishing parental fear for years to come. It's always the strange ones. Because nothing says accurate like claiming police involvement. I see the Daily John Has Cootie session is underway. This is Karen. She is eight years old. Take a good look because this is a Sid Davis film and she might not make it to the end. Every day she passes this store with a wonderful candy counter. And every once in a while her mother gives her a dime for a treat. But most of the time she thinks she's a freeloading bitch. At the store, even if it's only to window shop. Of course, Karen's parents have told her never to take money or candy from a stranger. But Karen never listened to them. But right now it looks as though she has forgotten these basic rules. But Karen's friend, the sales girl, hasn't forgotten and wonders who the stranger is that is buying candy for her and why. Karen, having already forgotten one of her parents' warnings, finds it easy to forget another. Never to go anywhere with a stranger or accept rides with people you don't know. No matter and had the boys and boys beware watch this film, that one would never have happened. This time, Karen is lucky. Her friend does what you should do in a situation like this. She takes down the license number of the car and the description of the stranger and calls the police. 1-800-HOT-COPS, Officer O'Malley speaking. For information... You're listening to Hot Fuzz, 105. Next week on Chips, Ponch and John finally make out. So that they can be on the lookout for the car with Karen and the stranger. It's the Perf Mobile! Wanna pet my pants, puppy? mother is beginning to get worried. She is waiting and waiting. She's afraid Karen will come back. But no Karen. She knows just how long it takes Karen to get home from school, but she is already half an hour late. Little bitch stop for drinks again. Pants Puppy and the police? Can this day get any more exciting? On the takedown meter, I give this a three. They may have to settle for the bronze. Now the sodomy can begin. So because Karen's friend remembered to take down the car's license number, everything turned out all right. And the man was arrested and Karen got probation. Phone number so that the policeman could call her mother right away to come and get her. Looks like we're stuck with her woman on the phone says so she don't want her back. And I am a policewoman. We had a while to wait for Karen's mother to come and get her, so this was a good chance for me to tell Karen of some of the dangers children her age must be on the lookout for. Like men in general. Most people in the world are good and nice, but unfortunately, there are some strange ones. Those and people are great! Are sick. Not sick with a cold or measles or anything like that, but sick in the mind. We call them mentally ill. And want to make you fear them. Now many boys and girls enjoy playing in areas like this. They explore interesting places and make up games to play by themselves. 
So it's okay to play in your gas wells? But you never know when there might be a strange one around. It's the world's hide and seek champion. Sometimes we become so involved in what we are doing that we can't see the danger. Like being in a Sid Davis film. And even if this little boy had seen the man, how could he know that he was a strange one? Maybe because of the fact the man had his penis out. Just like everyone else. I'm sitting by a strange one now. Get back! It is wise to avoid playing in deserted areas like this. Especially when you are alone. But he's not alone. The cameraman's there with him. I explained to Karen that you should not play in any area where there are no other people around. And you must also be on your guard even when you are downtown. Because one of those strange homeless people might ask for money to get something to eat. Three kids in and not one dead? Come on, Sid, you're falling down on the job. She politely and courteously gives him the information. Is she doing a Nazi salute? But when he asked her to go with him... She tells him, I'm not ready for that kind of commitment. ...and goes on her way. Never go with strangers when they ask for directions. And if there is any trouble, just call out for help. But when is Sid going to kill off one of these kids? He's about to make a mistake, you can help. By beating the shit out of them. It's always a good idea when you go to the park, or the movies, or even to the store, to take along a friend. That way you can both get molested. When you are at the park, play in the areas that are set aside as playgrounds. Do not hang around the restrooms. And if you see any of your playmates about to get into trouble, get help from a police officer or someone you know. Man, these kids are stupid. They'll go off with just about anybody. Just as these children did, they ran and found the little girl's mother. You not only have to look out for yourself, but for the little children who don't know any better and can't understand that some people are sick in the mind. Like Sid Davis. There are so many ways you can get into trouble with the strange ones. And one of the quickest is by hitchhiking. Again, if the boys and boys be worried seeing this, that film would never have happened. With strangers. There are so many things that could happen other than you're getting a quick ride home. The man may be drunk. Why is the blind man looking? Or he may be just a bad driver. Or a strange one with no intention of taking you home. If you ever see any of your friends hitchhiking and cannot stop them, get the license number of the car. And remember not to take shortcuts, especially through alleys or empty side streets. I knew those people at the VFW couldn't be trusted. You never know when a strange one might approach you, and it may never happen, but it is far better to be on the safe side. Be on your guard and know what to look out for. Like police women stealing fear. Like this little girl in the movie theater. Uh, did you part? Never let a stranger touch you or put his hands on you. She told the usher in the theater, and this man won't bother anyone again. I think Karen can see now how foolish she was. And if it hadn't been for a friend, remembering the right thing to do, how much trouble she might have been in. Unlike the amount of trouble she's in now. Karen will remember never to accept gifts or rides from strangers. 
and now she knows to stay clear of deserted places. So the moral of this story is avoid being in a Sid Davis film. And I hope you have become wiser too. Jay Park Rednecks, we don't make bad movies, we make bad movies better.